There we go. Uh, for those of you who, who are watching on YouTube and then all of a sudden uh, you, lost, you lost us, I had lost my internet connection. I had to uh, refresh the, the, the router slash modem uh, to restore internet access. Um, what happened, I have no idea. All I know is my internet was completely gone for, for a time, but we are, we're back live as far as the rest of the network is concerned. And this really bites when that happens. But, uh, you know, uh, look, I I'm just going to say it as simply as I can, okay? I'm going to say it as plain and as simple as I can. I, when, I was, when I was working, okay, when I was actually wor able to work, before I ended up being told by my doctors that I had to stop working for the, re <laughs> the rest of my days, I went to, I would get up in the morning, I'd go to work, I'd do my job. I didn't get up in the morning, go to work, and then one day all of a sudden decide, hey, I'm going to go, I'm, I'm here at work, but I'm protesting this, this, and this, and I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm not doing this until, until, you know, until my protest is done. No. How long do you think I would have lasted on a job protesting? I would have been fired, guaranteed. I would have been told by the boss, okay, well, you want to protest? Have a nice life. See ya. We'll hire somebody that, that wants the job. But this, this insanity with the, um, you know, with the, 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 with the NFL players pulling that bullshit, People are sick of it. People are fed up. People have had enough. You know, the fans, they're tired of seeing it day after day, week after week, when, when, when the NFL is playing. You want to protest? Do it on your own time. When you're getting paid to do a job, your ass better be out there doing that job. Here's the thing, though. They can replace me and you doing an ordinary job. These athletes, they just can't replace. These are, these are very rare human beings out there that can do what they can at that kind of level. If, if we protest Kaepernick? at work, it must... Yeah, Kaepernick's being blackballed now. Do you see some, how terrible some of these backup quarterbacks are in the yeah. NFL? I you, read an you article. Watch the Jets, you watch the Jets, the Raiders play with all their quarterbacks out. The, the, the product on the field, I mean, the ratings are going down. Yes, yeah, some of them because of the national anthem, because but others, some of them that some of these teams are so damn bad. I mean, at there was least there was a, there, there was an article about Kaepernick saying that he didn't live up to the standards that they expected. That they hired him. Yeah, he was he, not. He was not a hot shot player. So he didn't he still, have a good, his even his stats were all they sucked. So he a lot a of these the guys. Super Bowl. He took a team to the Super Bowl, and you're telling me he can't be a backup quarterback on thirty or one of thirty-two NFL teams? Well, the the article said that he, he wasn't uh, the hot shot; that he was actually a pretty much a failure. And uh, a failure the that took had, a team to the Super Bowl. Well, I don't think it was, well, it was just on him. Team to the Super Bowl. I don't. I don't think yeah. it was just him. Let me look it up and find the article on this. Hold <laughs> on. Uh, look, Kaepernick. You know. He was the one who started all this protesting nonsense last season, right? The players that are on the field right now, the, the, the guys that are going out there to play football, they're under contract. I'm pretty sure Kaepernick's contract was up anyway. And if that's the case, because he's the one who started all this nonsense... And the other guys still are still under contract? Well, you know what? They don't want to put the guy who started this mess under contract because they don't want him continuing it or encouraging it to continue even after the owners tell them it's done. No more. You stand when the national right. anthem is playing. Because the owners are the owners are losing money on this shit. They're losing a lot of money. And you know what? Eventually at some point. If the owners keep losing money, it's going to affect their ability to pay these salaries. 
that these players are making. And if they can't pay the salaries, right, you... well, guess what? The players have, have to make a decision. Continue protesting in the manner they're doing or end up flat broke on their ass. Any worker that starts a mutiny is going to be canned. You can't do that. You can't be... You can't be biting the. You can't be trying to get people along with you to start a mutiny, and then expect to keep your job. If you really believe in it that much, you're willing to throw your job away. You well, don't. Kaepernick threw his team. job away, and now the, yeah, the all, all the teams don't want him on there to play for him. Mm-hmm. And I can't say as I blame him. He might as well go be a. Well, yeah, he might as well go be a, a, a shoe salesman because he's, his his days in the, as a football player gone. Bye bye, catch you later. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know what? It's not even it's not it's gone even beyond the, the it's gone beyond the NFL in the respects that here you've got a bunch of you know a bunch of players that are dropping to one knee that had all these sweet deals with all these uh, different companies. You know, to advertise for them? Well, those companies decided to say, forget it. You're doing this? We'll find someone else. Yeah, are these guys really, really taking the same side as Antifa? Are they really? Because that's basically uh, their message, too. Well, if, if, they're, if they're running with the same message Antifa runs with... Uh, Simple answer? Yeah. And if they're side if they're do they're pulling the same kind of stuff that Antifa pulls as far as why they're protesting, well, then I would say they 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 agree with, they side with Antifa. And I'm I, no, I, I'm not down with that. I'm a, foot, I'm a fan of the New York wave. Giants, okay? And when I saw the three members of the New York Giants during the National Anthem on one knee, <laughs> I said, fuck you, Big Blue. And then not, I'm done. I haven't watched a football game since, since, it all, since they did that. Well, probably because the Giants are 0-5 not watching them. Not because I don't care if, they were, if, if they're 0-5. That doesn't matter to me. I'm a. I'm, if you're a loyal fan, you're a loyal fan, regardless. But there comes a point in time when you have to say, okay, you guys want to drop to one knee and disrespect their, the country that allowed, that gives you the golden opportunity to make millions of dollars playing a playing a game. Well, let us know how you I, feel when your when your salary you gets broken up. I think you're underestimating the players and the power of social media, uh, how much power they really have here. Uh, oh, I'm not underestimating anything. Checks, but Believe it. Th- well, don't underestimate social media and the power that these players, and, you know, it seems like the ball's in the owner's corner now, uh, but uh, the players, they might have something up their sleeve here. Um, that can really put the put the owners back in the corner. How it all started, where you know they were doing whatever they wanted. So um, just be aware that the players have social media and how much that uh, can affect things one way or another nowadays. There's two articles that I just put in the chat room. Oh, Pitts- Pittsburgh about about Kaepernick, your, uh, about Kaepernick not working out that he doesn't have what what it takes. Two articles that I put. There's a ton of them. You do a, you do a search on it, and shit comes up all over the place. They're not going to babysit them. They're not going to babysit any of them. It said that you could get better choices as free agents out there. Uh, that you could find people that are out there that aren't signed with anything that have a better, better stats than what he, what he's doing. The better capability. Well, the quarterback is the coach on the field, and yeah. you have to you have to be a strong coach mentality to to be a good quarterback and you can't have a, a mutinous coach no. on the field. There's, there's one article that says Joe Montana, arguably one of the two greatest quarterbacks in the NFL history, doesn't think Colin Kaepernick is being blackballed. 
It's not about Kaepernick's beliefs in social injustice, says Joe. It's about how good he is. Well, <laughs> I mean, you, you can't uh, tell me from what I've seen on the field that he isn't at least a backup on maybe 10, 15 teams in the NFL. Uh, is it I mean, worth it now he's a liability? Is it worth it for them to keep well, somebody I as mean, a backup yeah, he, that's going to cost them? He, no. He's a distraction. Like yeah. maybe Tim Tebow, Tim Tebow was a distraction as well. Tim yeah. Tebow would win that, games, yeah. but he was a distraction in a total different way um, as someone as Kaepernick. But nonetheless, he was he, he was a distraction. Yeah, but you see, with Tim and Tebow, he's the, the distraction that he provided wasn't even a distraction until somebody until a mainstream media outlet made a stink of it. And you know what? He didn't go down on one knee during the national anthem. He would do that off to the side, out, you know, out, you know away from the, the, you know, right there on the sidelines, where he was doing what? He wasn't protesting. He was praying. Tim Tebow's a Christian, and he got. <coughs> He got he, because of the mainstream media. He got hit. He got slapped, you know, in the face for praying. Oh, I'm sorry. Wasn't America founded on 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 on, on Christian on Christian beliefs? Didn't the founding fathers have Christian beliefs when they founded when when America was founded? Yeah, My goodness, of, it, it seems like they, they 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 have to find fault. With anything, but now back when that happened, a lot of no. Go ahead, Mike. <clears throat> back when that happened, a lot of the veterans and everything were, weren't weren't in motion. They weren't activated. Uh, that now they are because now we've been listening to it. We've been dealing with it. The media's had it. The liberals have had the microphone. They've had the podium. They've been describing to it. They've been telling us what to do. Politically correct. This has to be looked at like this. I said enough. The conservatives now, all the rest of it, we stood up and we were enough. If that happened now, if Tebow did something like that now, today, there'd be people defending him. I'm not, we've had enough. So once these people are trashed on the media, they're fucking trashed. It's not going to be where the media can try to do damage control now and convince me that Kaepernick is a good guy. And, oh, I understand. He's just, uh, that's his personal beliefs and bullshit. Once social media is already fucking, uh, well, he's trashed, he's ruined. And they know that. They can't do damage control on it. Any of them. I think well, we're going to see a change. We're going to see a change because they pissed off enough people doing this that it's not a small thing anymore. It's not, oh, that's cute. Oh, look how nice that is. Well, you think they'll get invited to the White House? Fuck no. Obama's gone. Those days are over. No, and, and of course, you know, the players and the players using Trump as as an excuse to protest to continue protesting. That's all that was was an excuse. Okay, right. yes, he's the president of the United States, and and you know maybe he could have handled things a little a little better, but you know what? He was a fan of football before he became president. So was the vice president. Oh, and look at look at what happened. Players went down on one knee during the national anthem, and what did the vice president do? See ya. I'm out of here. I didn't come here to watch oh, the protest. I came here to watch a football game. Yeah, the vice president. Yeah, yeah, no shit. He walked out too. Trump already ruined one league, the USFL. Now he's trying to ruin another league, the NFL. I mean, Good, what, what's flattens this? Him. I hope he's well, fucking he sure, flattened. He's sure flattened the USFL. Good. I, I hope he flattens them all. It, it's you, time, you time that all these, all these groups learn a lesson. Because you know what? It's, education has to start again with something. The main thing has to be fucking embossed on their foreheads, accountability. You do this, this is going to be the end result. You fuck up, you do something, do disgrace our flag or go after our veterans or do some sort of a stupid fucking ass thing, there's going to be accountability. And you're going to pay a price. Yep. Are you ready to pay that price? The pay one the price. Seven paid the price. Remember the Dixie Chicks back then when there was a patriotic attitude? Back when? 
after 9 11? Remember that bullshit and Dixie Chicks pulled it? They were done. Their careers were finished. That's accountability. Well, just, just remember, 75% of the NFL is African American, so. Oh, so that's that's saying, justification listen, for, you know, no, pissing off the fans? No, this this just ain't going to go away, like, as it, it, easy as everyone thinks. Okay, the NFL is going to make a roll and everyone's going to follow by. You, you think it's just going to happen that easy? Well, well I'll guess you, if they start using a race card, because <coughs> how many Chinese or how many Spanish or how many black are on the NFL or something, you know what that's going to do? That's going to anger us even more. Oh, yeah. That'll anger us even more. We're like, these motherfuckers. So all of a sudden now, that's how desperate they are? Is they going to say, well, because I'm black, that I should be allowed to sit the fuck down, I tell them. Look what they, look, no. look what they, look what they did to the, to the rebel flag. Over something that the blacks today weren't even born 150 years ago. Okay? To me... That's stupid. You didn't go and do your research, okay? And there are a lot of blacks that did. I'm not saying every one of them. A lot of blacks do know their history, okay? But for these people that don't, oh, well, that's racism. We gotta take that. We gotta take these, these symbols down. We gotta change the name of these schools. We gotta change the name of the frog. We got. We can't do this. Uh, we can't have Austin. We can't have Columbus Day in Austin. Uh, now it's a uh, Indigenous Day or what the fuck ever. Come on. What is the bullshit going to stop? You're you're trying to change symbolism. Yes, it happened. What are you gonna do? Go back in time and change it? You know, this is show show you how stupid these people are, and they're fucking pretty stupid in my opinion. Okay. Well, guys, I got a final comment now, and then I got to go. Can I can I get uh, it in real quick? Sure. Okay. I'm 45 years old. I've been watching the NFL. For about 35 years now, I work all week long. The one thing I enjoy more than anything is on Sunday from 12 p.m. to about 12 at night, sitting and watching football, getting away from everything, my work and everything. So I'm going to watch these games and enjoy them no matter what, who does what. I don't care. That's my enjoyment, and I deserve to watch it if I want to watch it. I, I put a hard week in at work. And I love the NFL. That's that's all I got, guys. You have a good night. All right, caller. Thanks for joining. Well, I'll put it to you like this, okay? My personal my my personal opinion, and I've said this before, and I will say it again, because people need people need to hear this. Ad nauseum, if necessary. These players, they go out on the field. They're in. The, they're in their. They're, they're in their. Uh, they're, they got their jerseys on. They got their pads on. They got all that shit on for protection and everything else. They're out there to play football. When they go onto that field, they are on private property. If the people who own the stadiums state that all players must stand uh, in respect to our nation, its flag, and so forth, when the national anthem is playing and anyone that goes to one knee will not be allowed on the stadium property again. This is not the place to protest. Protesting can be done on a public street off of stadium property. That includes not limited to the parking lot. And that's where you take your protest. If you can't do that, you have no business being in here. So the owners telling these players to straighten up and fly right is the right thing to do. And it's a shame that that other caller is not here. Because one thing I wanted to point out 
is something that's very obvious. Okay? In the fan base, you have a vast, a, a, a good number of African American fans, a good number of white fans, a good number of Hispanic fans. Now, the African American community, the black community at large, is probably just slightly higher in number fan base than, say, white or Hispanic. But they're just as fed up as everyone else. It's not about race when it comes to being fed up with what the players are doing. It has to do with people in general being fed up with it. Right, and you don't you don't sign up to do a job to go express your rights on the job. You have no. a set of rights, and if they're violated, then there's a problem. <coughs> but you don't go to express your rights at work. Yeah, your job is like your that job. Cadet at West Point, like that cadet at West Point wearing that Che Guevara fucking shirt and uh, all that bullshit and everything. He's fucked. At graduation. Remember seeing that? Dumbass. I didn't see that. Oh, uh, yeah. He wore, underneath his uniform at graduation, he had a shirt that said he was a communist. The guy is an outright communist. <laughs> and uh, hmm. Che Guevara shirt, and he opened up his, on, on the on the field, just when they graduated, opened up the front of his uh, uniform, and there's the Che Guevara shirt underneath, and he had wrote something insane, I forget what it was, written inside his hat, and he held it says like communism will win or something i forget what he remember that george mm-hmm yeah mm. there's a time and a place the wrong time wrong place dude and you get the wrong fucking and, job for this yeah that's a good idea you know everybody gets health care and a ham sandwich yeah yeah dumbass and he's, he's a west point graduate nice Healthcare until it just stops. But what are you going to do when it stops? You know, if you if you give yourself over to communism, you have no voice. No. You have nothing that you're not given. See, one of my one of my biggest uh, complaints in life has always been how people that are in a particular position whether it's in the military whether it's in fe in the federal government or the private sector one of my biggest complaints is that most people in po most politicians if not all of them fail to recognize that we are, we, we, you know, there is a time and a place to say certain things, to do certain things. Something the NFL players never, never really paid attention to, apparently, because of what they're doing. So, when you've got a West Point cadet doing what he did, when you've got people going out, and I'm talking Antifa, Yeah, we're here. Uh, yeah, hold, hold on one second. Normally, I don't take blocked numbers, but I do believe this is Emmy calling on using a Skype number. Emmy, you there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because normally I don't do the 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 one 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 stuff, but being as oh. you 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 know you're, you're you're using a Skype number, um, and you did Skype me now. Huh? No, no. Skype? She's Skype? got a regular. She's got a. Re she's got a phone number through Skype. Oh, Skype out number. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I said, wow. Yeah. They fixed it. Obviously not. See, <clears throat> if I went, if if I were to go to work, let's say I had a job and I went to work and I protested while on the job, I could expect to be to be let go either that same day or the next day.
when you're in a high profile position, yeah. protesting in that high profile position doesn't garner you that much protection. You end up getting the same kind of treatment that I had, that I would get. So the Colin Kaepernick's of the world need to wake up and smell the coffee. When their contract is over, do you honestly think for one minute the owners are going to sit there and go, well, you know, your stats were okay, you know, you did, you did really good, you know, blah, 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 but being as you embarrassed your team, you embarrassed the fans, you disrespected the country and the fans, I'm sorry, but your services next season will no longer be required. We're not renewing your contract. And there's not a thing the players union can do about it. Not a thing the players can do about it. Boy, you better learn how to play basketball. That's all I can tell you. Have a nice day. Or golf. Or golf. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Switch over to golf. You know, they do have jobs open at Burger King, McDonald's, and Taco Bell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tell you, there's, a, there's an arrogance that comes with these motherfuckers. Once they're making money like that, and those paychecks are coming in, and they're buying mansions and cars, and there's an arrogance, and they forget, and they think that uh, I have the right. I'm special. You're not fucking special. You're not special. Well, you're not special. You Take know, a look at the people that are buying man. these these tickets. The people that are buying the tickets that are sitting in those bleachers. Are they 90% black? Are they 80% Hispanic? Are they? Who is it? Who's the majority? Did they ever take a look at at the demographics, basically, and, and figure out? Who their fucking their, their customer base is? Who the loyalty base is? If they want to turn it into a race thing, I mean, are do we have like inner city ghetto people buying these yearly fucking tickets? There was a guy. With their food stamps. I. Mike, there was a guy recently. It's a good thing to look at. Recently, there was a guy who on YouTube, and they spotlighted it on the uh, in the media too. Some media outlets were negative with it. While one was actually positive with it. He took a lighter, pair of tongs, and his season tickets. And he went light. And he told them up front, I've had it. I don't have the kind of money to replace these tickets once they're gone. So, guess what? Goodbye, football. And he burned his season tickets. Oh. The mainstream media and I on the left last year. called him called him a nut called him a, called him nuts. Said he, you know he's a whack job he should, you know for doing that shit. Really? Or he's principled. He was he he be, he believes that you know by doing what they did it was disrespectful to the country and to the veterans and to the fans. And he felt more so to the veterans. Because if it wasn't for the veterans, he wouldn't the players wouldn't have the freedom to be assholes. Like they're being. Well, Emmy, what's on your mind, dear? The weather. Oh yeah. Uh the fires. Out in California. Yeah, that's a that that's yeah. What do you think, people? The wildfires in California they're they're getting out of con- they are way out of control. Did you, did you did you see that link I put in there about those those almost a hundred year old couple burned up? Yeah, I put almost it in too. Yeah, you put what the guy was a hundred. But to be a hundred years old, it had to be taken out by a freaking damn wildfire. Wow. Yeah, they were married for seventy-five years, and I think that yeah. uh, she he was a hundred and she was ninety something. Yeah. Ninety-eight, I think. Who died? George. Hey, yeah, both of them. Martin. Yeah. yeah. You know, I've been up there. And we got friends that live up in the Anaheim Hills. I got to send a message to one tonight to make sure that hopefully they're they're all right. You know, we lived in LA. I think one of those. 
think one of those pictures showed the uh, showed their son is looking at the damn burnout lot. Nothing there. I mean, there's, oh boy, I, I hate to be out there. Mm. Man. And I think Man. one of the famous casinos or hotels burnt down or something. I was just listening to some of the news. I think it's about 2,000 structures. I think it was about 2,000 structures yeah. now. Something like that. Well, that's just, yeah. I mean, that's the biggest that's scare. You go, to a, you go to a home show in California, and you see all sorts of companies that make things to to try to sell the homeowners to make a buck, obviously. From here, you can have your own small generator with a pump built in and use your swimming pool to help protect your house against fires. Uh, sorry to tell you, but the amount of water that's in your swimming pool is not going to fucking do much. It's not going to last very long. And then what are you going to do once you drain that thing? You know, I, I mean, people do everything. They've got sprinkler systems that you mount in the in the roof of your house. So it'll keep your house covered with a sheet of fucking water because of the sparks and the embers that are flying. You know what yeah, I mean? If they land gone. on your roof and stuff. And yeah. that's great, but what happens when the water pressure goes? Well, they were uh, telling people not to use their water. They were telling yeah. people to stop stop because it lowers the, the fire department's water pressure. Yep, that's it. I mean, that's a huge scare out there. That's uh, that and earthquakes. Yeah. My grandparents live down there. I'm always worried. Every summer, it's always worse. Every year. Who are they? They're in Northern California in the foothills. In the oh, shit. Yeah. Hey, listen, inside, everybody. East of uh, Chico. Listen, everybody. Do me a favor. Give me, a, give me about 35 seconds. I need to take a quick station ID break. I never got a chance to do any of the, the, the usual PSAs that I do. So, All right. Um, 35 seconds for station ID, and we'll be right back. We're pausing for station identification. You're listening to Firefox News Online, live on blogtalkradio.com and simulcasting live on mixler.com. Firefox News Online is fair, balanced, and always responsible. Thirty-one minutes remaining in the broadcast. Thirty-one minutes left to go before we, uh, we we're done for the night. I'm George Sinzer, and of course you're listening to the Firefox News Online live on Blog Talk Radio, Mixler, and you can see us live on YouTube. That's right. Three different ways to catch this broadcast. Ain't that special? Ain't that just cool? Ah, uh, but folks. This broadcast can't survive without the loyal listenership that it has. And, of course, we can use your help, too. If you like what you hear on this broadcast, if you're a first-time listener or you've been around for a long time, Firefox News Online has a web, has a uh, Cafe Press account where you can help keep this broadcast alive go to cafepress.com slash the ffnop store that's cafepress.com slash the ffnop store where you can find all kinds of great stuff with the firefox news online logo right on there i don't get a dime of the money all the pro all the money goes right back into keeping this broadcast alive so uh show your support and your loyalty to a broadcast that brings you news and information and discussion about what's going on in our world by going to cafepress.com slash the FFNOP eStore, the official eStore of Firefox News Online. And as always, a quick rundown in the chat room and the phone lines. Gunslinger, Hillbilly Girl, and Kilroy is here are all in the chat room. And, of course, they're on the phone lines with me, too. And on the phone line also is Ben. Well, that was, oh, George, that was easy. I can't 
Chris Mike wasn't there, wasn't he? Tell him about this. Tell him about that tank. Mm. Put a picture of it. Mike, yeah. Oh, you. Oh, this. There was a. There's a. Uh, in River Oaks, Texas. River Oaks, Texas. There is a, a guy who's got, who owns a multi-million-dollar house, and he has a fully restored World War II tank parked right outside his multi-million dollar home. It's uh, a Sherman, right? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm going to post a link in the chat room. I'm going to let uh, Mike see this picture. No, I saw it. I already posted a link in there explaining it's a Sherman. Oh, it is a and Sherman I put tank. A, the, yeah, and I put the link in there showing the weight because Gunslinger asked about the weight. There were different models. They changed the turrets. They changed the armament on it as the war went on. And then post-war, they modif modified the product again. So the weight changed. But, uh, I mean, we those were hot dogs. I mean, we, we spit them out like hot dogs in World War II, but they were dangerous tanks to be in. Uh, I wouldn't say it was the best design of World War II. The Germans used to call them Hansons, uh, meaning the cigarette lighter, because they worked on gasoline. So if you got hit, there's a damn good chance you could burn to death in that tank. It wasn't Ooh, easy. Shit. Ouch. So, yeah. But you we know, my produced them faster than they could fucking, faster than they could knock them out. Well, apparently... I almost named my dog Sherman. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, <laughs> but instead, I named him Panzer. Oh, all right. <laughs> Better tank. Except for the transmission. <laughs> the engine, one of my favorites was the Tiger Mark One. I. I always liked the works of the Tiger Mark One. Yeah, uh, I think, Gunslinger, you were saying that uh, 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 Mike, m something about Mike wanting, should have one of these? Yeah, yeah. I don't want one of them. They're, they're a lot of money, man. The kind of World War II tank now used to be, it used to be more affordable even 20 years ago. But uh, now, shit. Probably. Three hundred thousand to a half a million dollars, depending on the condition. Yeah. Did that guy spend six hundred thousand on that one? Yeah. See, there you go. Six hundred thousand dollars for that tank, but I, I, that's probably with the cost of refurb re, re, refurbishing it and everything else. Um, but he's got this tank parked uh, parked outside his home in River Oaks, Texas, and the the neighbors are bitching about it. Believe it or not, that ain't very far from me. That's over by Fort Worth, Texas, about forty miles over. Oh, George, I get—I was taken to court by uh, that bicycle shop that we used to be across the street from me, by that liberal guy, because he complained to the court that I had too many military vehicles parked in front of my building, and uh, and the judge said, yeah, I got there, and the judge said, are they all registered? Yes, and he said, then there's no problem. They're yours. They're all legal. They're insured. They're registered. And nobody has the right to complain because all of your vehicles are painted the same color, green or camouflage. They have no right to say that. So he threw it out of court. <laughs> but the liberal actually took me to court because of that. You have too many Army vehicles. You should at least have the decency to paint it rainbow. Yeah, fucking asshole. <laughs> what a piece of shit. Pink. That was the Pink. guy. That, and then what he did was he took a big piece of cardboard. Fucking big. It must have been... Uh, four or five foot square. It was big. And he painted on it, make peace, not war. And he stuck it over the cannon of my anti-tank gun that was hooked up to my Jeep that I was towing behind it. So one morning I went out and I found that thing. So I, I folded it up, walked across the street and left it in front of his place. Gave it back to him. I went, over, I went in, I introduced myself to him when he first started with the shit. And I said, hi, how are you? I'm your neighbor across the street. Always keep in mind that it's good to have great relations with your neighbors because things can turn sour fast. Do you understand me? Especially when you've got a gun like that. <laughs> he, he fucking <laughs> stared at me. He just stared at me. He didn't say anything. He looked like Peter Frampton. It's a fucking asshole. Oh, that was the, that was the question we was going to ask. That, that, that gun that you got, is that thing... Do you have to put concrete or something to deactivate them things? Oh, no, uh, all we had to do is we had to... We had to cut the recoil mechanism because it's a hydraulic recoil mechanism. It's a 40-millimeter anti-tank gun, towed, 
behind it, and then we had to weld the breech block, and then we had to cut a hole the size of the bore into uh, the barrel. Wow. And then I then you blocked the end of the barrel so that nothing could go put into it, so you couldn't turn it into a black a black powder gun, you know, a regular cannon. But now yeah, what are you going to do? I mean, that's those are ATF rules. There's a complete outline. They they print you can print out an outline for each type of gun to make sure that it's deactivated according to their rules, which sucks. But you know, what are you going to do? Um, yeah, well, well, you know what you could. I mean, if they did, if you did, if you didn't block the the, the barrel of it, you could shoot um, auto rockets out of it. Yeah, you know, I wanted I wanted to get one of those flags, the red the red flags that say boom or bang. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get one of those so that when I'm towing it, I'll have that hanging out the end of it. You know how you have to have a red flag for anything that extends out for the. I'll get the red flag and say "bang" like the cartoons it comes out of the pistol. Oh, <laughs> oh, well, shit. according according to the article that I have here on on this tank, uh, the homeowners association sent him sent this guy a, a letter, and and the owner of this tank is a lawyer. His name is. Uh, his name is Tony Busby. Well, the, the the association sent him a letter saying the tank impedes traffic and causes a safety issue and serious concerns for neighbors, right? Well, Busby... Only if you leave it in the road. <laughs> it's parked right outside his, right outside his house. Hmm. Right. On the road or in his yard? On the road. It was a joke. I was saying only only impedes traffic if you leave it in the street. Yeah. <laughs> well, Busby uh, said that it's not violating any ordinance, but for some people, it makes the homeowners association uncomfortable. Well, you know what? If 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 there's no city ordinance or anything that 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 says he can't do he can't park it there like that, well then. The homeowners association is just blowing smoke. All right. Oh, he's yeah, an attorney. He can sue them for harassment. These HOAs are out of control. I mean, I know people sign the people sign the paperwork when they move into these places, but it just sounds like I would never do it. it sounds like a nightmare. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't do either. it either. No way. Because you sign it, so you can't say they're Nazis. You sign the paperwork and. Good, good. I'm glad they didn't think of a law against having a tank in your yard. He's a lawyer. He'd probably shoot it down anyway, but I remember before all this kneeling for the anthem and all this flag hate started, um, a couple of years ago, it was in the news that a homeowners association made a guy take his American flag down. Oh, many times that's happened. And, yeah, this is, of course, it's Seattle. Um but this guy was, he's like, well, what can I do? I guess I signed the paper. I, I guess I have to. Like, but really? You're going to you're gonna go that far with it just because of words on a piece of paper? Yeah. yeah. Gives that's your neighbor what, you know, power what, over you. That's what Ron Rick's saying. You know, you sign that fucking contract and you give, them, you, you give in to them. That's where you get fucked at. I don't care if it's a homeowners association or a municipality or a contract, whatever. You, you or a free app contract. on your yeah. phone. Yeah, I mean, there it is. Yeah, crazy. You guys, you hearing any and static they, on the line? A lot. It's probably from me. I'm sorry. I'm not hearing any static from radiating. anywhere. I'm radiating. Okay. They gave me a card. I never, I didn't even read it. When at the hospital, they gave me a card, and they said if, if I set off any detectors to hold this card, and uh, then I was talking to no, 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 Department of Nuclear Medicine, Nuclear Cardiology. And it says this patient has undergone nuclear medicine procedure and has received blah blah blah. Uh, so I'm probably screwing up your show. No, no, nah, I don't hear any static. I, I don't uh, hear anything. Thank you. That shit, 
that shit made me nauseous, nauseous, I'll tell you that. 